The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to yet another session. I am Charles Erasche, your physical education and sports teacher. Today we are working with the Form 3 classes without any exception. Before we get to our lesson, Let's do or correct the assignment or homework I gave to you last time. We wanted you to list a daily activity for each manipulation technique used. I repeat, we wanted you to list a daily activity for each manipulation technique used. And our answers were, first of all, we handle or hold a knife. That's we handle or we hold a knife. In projections, we dry a garment on the drying line. I repeat, in projections, we dry a garment on the drying line. In receptions, we get your balance from the store or you receive a gift. I want you to remember or remind or recall on the last lesson how to receive something that's in receiving or in reception. You get your balance from the store or you receive a gift. In compression, you squeeze a garment or a dress. That's you squeeze a garment or a dress. In transportation, you pull a bucket of water from the well and carry it to the toilet using a bucket. I repeat, you pull a bucket from the well. You can also carry water from the, to uh, from the well yes, to the toilet using that bucket. I repeat, in transportation, you pull water from the well and then you transport it using your bucket. Our lesson today is entitled Manipulation Techniques. I repeat, our lesson today is entitled Manipulation Techniques. We are working on the stages in the realization of manipulation techniques. We earlier told you that our lesson was divided into two presentations. In, under manipulation and today we are going to talk about the stages in the realization of manipulation techniques during our lesson we will have to attend certain objectives these objectives we want you to have some certain in order to attend these objectives we expect you to have previous knowledge on previous lessons still on manipulations we we'll post to you a real life situation where we are going to expect you uh, to bring out solutions using learning activities. We are going to use application exercises to better understand our lesson. Then finally, we are going to give you homework so that um, you can better uh, exercise our lesson. The objectives of our lesson today is to master the specific vocabulary of manipulation activities. We also have to master the stages of achieving the various techniques. Finally, we will need to master safety rules implemented in manipulations. We expect you to have knowledge. In order to better understand our lesson for today, we expect you to have knowledge in the specific vocabulary in the manipulation activities, the different manipulation techniques, the position of the hand or the upper limb in space. We earlier told you in our previous lesson that manipulation, um, is, in manipulation we deal mostly with our hands. 
um, but we still have some exceptions as we earlier mentioned. I want you to observe this image in manipulation techniques. I want you to recall in our previous lesson, manipulation techniques, we said we two, had two type, types of manual handling. First of all, we had the light handling, that's the light grip, where we use the tip of our fingers. And we said here that in the light handling um, is excellent because it, um, it is precise. It is excellent because it is precise. Then we talked of um, firm handling. We said firm handling was good because you needed to use force in, uh, in order to achieve what you wanted to do in your manipulation. Another image is proposed to you. Images are proposed to you, sorry. Another series of images are proposed to you. First of all, we have projections in manipulations. You see the uncle there, he's projecting an object. We also have receptions, how to receive an object. How you receive, we said you receive with a, how to receive an object when they hand over an object to you, how you receive the object. Next, we have compression. How do we compress? That's how we compress. Either we compress the object using our hand or we compress another object on another object, as you can see on the images. We also talked of displacement. How do we displace objects? We talked of displacing light objects and displacement of heavy objects. We said we could displace light objects on our heads, and then we also said we could displace them on our back, we could place them on our shoulders. Uh, and then we talked of displacement of heavy objects. We said we could displace them by pulling them or by pushing them. I want you to observe the images given to you. That's the position of the upper limb. Yes, observe the images of the upper limb. We talked of flexions. What do you understand by flexions? Flexions is when you raise your hands backwards. I repeat, flexion is when, first of all, you raise your hands backward. You see the red circle, it, it, it describes or showing an individual raising his hands backwards. So raising your hands backwards represents flexion. We also have that you take your hands forward and backwards represents flexion. We also have um, you bend your forearm over to your arm. That's you bend your forearm, you take it and you bring it back to your arm. That's flexion. We have, you tilt your palm. That's, you tilt your palm of the hand to the forearm. That's, you tilt the palm of your hand to your forearm. That's another form of flexion. Tilting your palm to your forearm. Now, you tilt your finger upwards towards the palm of your hand. That's, you tilt your finger upwards towards the palm of your hand. That's another form of flexion. Here we talk of extensions. I want you to look at the first image too. You, you, that's you raise your hands backwards. When you raise your hands that's forward and backwards, that's extension. That's you raise your hands forward and then you bring it backwards, that's extension. You move your forearm away from your arm. When you move your forearm away from your arm, it's a form of extension. You bring back your hand to your forearm. Bringing back your arm to your forearm is another form of extension. I mean, say, I repeat myself. Bringing back your arm to your forearm is another form of extension. Bringing back your finger to the back of your hand, bringing back the fingers to the back of your hand is still another form of extension. Here we are going to talk of rotations. The first image is proposed to you. You bring the forearm to the side and towards the body. You bring the forearm to the side and towards the body. It's a form of rotation. Another form of rotation is 
a full arm circumference. That's you. Turn your hand round. That's meaning it means a full arm circumference. That's you. Turn your arm round. Full arm circumference. Another form of rotation. Another form of rotation still is your palm turning and facing upwards. I mean, your palm is from the origin. You turn it upwards. You go back to the original position. And then later you turn it downwards. That's your palm facing up. Then later you bring it back to the original position. Then you turn it downwards. That's closed. You present another form of rotation. Another image is proposed to you. Opening and closing. When you open your arms, it's a form of opening. And, and then, then when you bring it back to the original position, it's a form of closing. So opening your arms and closing them represents a form of manipulation. I want you to look at the image of the real life situation proposed to you. Observe keenly. Yes, you can see a dog. Can see a snake. But what can we say about this real life situation? A dangerous snake crosses the street and tries to take refuge in one of the houses in the village. A dog sees it and tries to scare it away, but the snake seems determined to get back into the house using a spear or a stone. How are you going to kill the snake? at your first trial without burning with sorry without hurting the dog i repeat a dangerous snake crosses the street and tries to take refuge in one of the houses in the village a dog sees and tries to scare it away but the snake seems determined to get back into the house using a spear or a stone how are you going to kill the snake at your first trial without hurting the dog? In order to better answer our real life situation, we are going to work on the different phases of carrying out a manipulation activity. We are also going to work on safety rules to observe in specific situations. And then finally, we shall talk on safety rules related to other life situations. The different phases we are going to use to realize or try to solve a real life situation, we are going to talk of the steps to kill the snake. Which steps are you going to use to kill this snake? First of all, you're going to prepare yourself for the action that you're preparing for the action, preparing to take, uh, preparing yourself to get to the snake. That's next, you're going to build up uh, movement. That's you build up movement to get to the snake. You transfer energy into the object you're going to use to get to the snake. You have a final action that will permit you not to hurt yourself. That's not getting to the snake. You succeed in killing the snake without hurting yourself. Then finally, you have a catch-up or a recovery stage. Observe the image. We begin with preparing for action. Step, the steps consist to prepare for action. First, you need to hold the object. We earlier said that in manipulation, when you hold the object at the tip of your fingers, you prepare yourself for, you're precise to get, in short, you prepare yourself for precision. That's the object you want to get to is precise without any mistakes. You can also take a start position that you prepare yourself, then you take a start position, you hold your object at the tip of your fingers, then you take a start position. Uh, uh, it could possibly be a run-up position. How do you build up? You build up yourself. What does it consist of? Yes, you start, you're ready to take a position. What do you do? You open your arms, you prepare yourself, you open your arms, you bring back, you turn to the throwing arm, you turn the throwing arm and you take it back. I repeat, you open your arms, you turn and, or you take the throwing arm backwards and you prepare yourself for action. Finally, you also space your legs. That's you take 
you open your arms, you bring the object that you're going to use in killing the snake backwards, and then you open your legs in order to have a kiri bloom. Now, how, what do you do? You transfer energy into the object. To transfer energy into the object, you need force. What do you do when you need force? What do you, how do you apply the force on the object? First of all, you, your knee is in the direction of action. Your knee is in the direction of action, as seen in the first image. Next, your foot is placed in such a way that you have support. I repeat, your foot is placed in such a way that you have support. Next, you transfer the force from the foot to your arms. So when you bring your arm, that's your stick that you're going to use in killing the snake, you bring it backwards and then you transfer the force that was in your feet to your arms, ready for action. Then the final action, what does it consist of? The final action getting to the snake. First of all, you realize the desired action. You let go of your object. You let go of the object that you realize the action. You let go of the object which is getting to the snake, either your stick or your stone. Next, you propel the object. You propel the object upwards, forward, as high as possible, as far as possible so that it can get to the snake. According to, then you project your object according to the projection angle. You propel your object according to the projecting and projection angle. You will not just take your stone and then you throw it elsewhere. No, you first of all position yourself according to the, the direction of the snake. You propel the object and then you look at the angle, precise about the angle. The catch up. What is the catch up meant for? The catch up is to enable you stabilize yourself. That's you enable yourself. That's you drop the throwing arm. That's when you've let go of the object, you drop the throwing arm. Next, you halt and rest your body speed. So you halt and rest your body speed as seen on the image in order not to get closer to the snake. Finally, you regain your equilibrium. That's when you have dropped the train arm, you hold and rest your body speed. Then finally, you regain your equilibrium. The safety rules in the specific situation. What are the specific rules in this specific situation? I mean, the precautions you should take during these preparations. You need to take precautions so that you won't get to that snake because getting to the snake easily harm yourself. What are the precautions you need to take? You need to free the landing zone. That's where the stick or the stone is going to land. You need to free it. No obstacles. Look at the image proposed to you. That's a precaution during the build up. What do you need to do? You look at the, 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 the uncle on that image. First of all, he places properly his arm ready to throw the object. He brings his body backwards, that is inclining himself backwards. Next, he opens the free arm for balance. So he brings his body backwards, then he opens the free arm for balance. This will permit him to have a kilogram. What are the precautions you need to take in order to transfer energy from your arms to your from your legs to your arm. First of all, you pivot on the front foot or you turn on the front foot. Next, you bring back, you bring back the torso, your shoulders and your arms and you turn. First of all, you pivot on the front foot. Next, you bring back the torso, your shoulders and your arms in turn in preparation. Then the precautions for the final phase, that's getting to the, 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 the snake finally, what do you need to do? You need to propel when the arm is in front, as seen, done by the uncle. You need to propel when the arm is in front. You also need to whip your wrist, whip your wrist, letting go of the object and 
Yes, letting go of the object. Finally, you need to let go of, of the object. As you earlier said, when you whip your rigs, it means you're letting go of the object. The precautions during the catch-up phase. So which precautions do you need to take during the catch-up phase? First, as you look at the image proposed to you, you tilt your trunk forward. You tilt your trunk forward. That's to have equilibrium. You tilt your trunk forward. Next, you let go of the object. When you tilt your trunk forward, you let go of the object. Finally, you place the second foot. When you place the second foot, you come back to your start position. The safety rules. After having the safety rules, before getting to the snake, we have safety rules in other manipulation situations. In these safety rules, we are going to talk of you remove objects that are dangerous for yourself and other objects such as rings, watches, non-rubber bracelets. You also project the joints from the socks and unnecessary efforts. I want you to look at this image. What do you need when picking up a light object? What do you need to do in order to pick up a light object? Posture A, not recommended. Your back is very exposed. What is good? Yes, B is good if the object is very light. But C is very excellent. You need to bring down yourself. It is very recommended in order to pick an object. In order to pick an object, avoid bending or taking down your leg or your genuflect. The best position to do is to squat. So you highly, it is highly recommended, especially for those having problems with their knees and everything. Okay. Another image is proposed to you to lift up heavy objects. What do you need to do when you lift up heavy objects? You need to, the posture. Posture A is not good for you. What is good? Posture B is highly recommended you carry you bend you, you bring down your body to get the object you don't bend because your back is exposed what do you need to do to place a heavy object up uh, 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 image a is highly not recommended but image b is highly recommended you get on steps to get to that object now what do you need to do to transport heavy objects a is not recommended because your back is exposed, but B is highly recommended, so you push the heavy object. Okay, mopping the floor. Which position is highly recommended here? No, A is not recommended, as you earlier said, because the back is in pain. It is highly exposed. The position recommended is B. B is highly recommended. Okay, what do you need to do in order to tie your laces? Yes, in order to tie your laces, you can. A is not recommended because you, your back is in pain. B is a fair attitude, taking support, but still not highly recommended. C, it is pretty good attitude if you are flexible. That's if you're young. You're very flexible, but for the third age persons, highly not recommended. And finally, D is the best position to take. You look for a stool or a chair, you place your leg, highly recommended without any accidents, no back in pain, nothing. Okay. In our lesson today, you needed to, um, to be, be talked about the purpose of this lesson was to master the specific vocabulary of the manipulation activities, master the stages of realizing the various techniques, and to master safety rules in manipulation. In order to better understand this lesson, we are going to have some exercises. The first question for our first exercise is, what are the steps to kill the snake? I repeat, what are the steps you use to kill the snake? And our answer is, we had, we prepared ourselves for action. We built up our movement. We transferred our energy from our knees to our hands. That's our forces from our knees to our hands, our legs to our hands. We had a final action to get to the snake. And we had finally had a catch up. Then 
the next question, exercise two, that's a multiple choice question. It's an affirmation. Preparation consists of, I repeat, preparation consists of, and the answer is, to propel the object and form. To open and fold your arm to the side. To hold the object and stand. To recover your balance and look. I repeat my question. Preparation consists of what? To propel the object and fall. To open and fold your arm to the side. To hold the object and stand. And finally, to recover your balance and look. And our answer is to hold the object and stand. I want you to recall during the lesson we talked of preparing, preparing yourself to get to the snake. Yeah, we're talking about holding an object and standing. Okay. Identify the good practices. So what is the best, the best measure to take when wanting to carry or get an object? First of all, yes, these are the best actions to take. Where we, they are not settled because it avoids you from having any pain on your back so it avoids any back pain okay um we have come to the end of our lesson but we are not going to end the lesson without giving you homework and our homework goes thus list the phases of the short put sequence taking into account two major techniques i repeat List the phases of the short put sequence, taking into account two major techniques. In order to better understand our work or to improve the quality of our work, we got knowledge from Form 3 Study Program 2020, Didier Pope, the short put technique PDF. Technical and Biomechanical approach to short put PDF. W W Dream uh, um, Dreamtime point com. W W Wikipedia point org November twenty twenty. Our next lesson is titled "The Rules of Practice for Locomotion Activities: Case Study of Working." I repeat. Our next lesson is titled, The Rules of Practice for Locomotion Activities, The Case of Working. Tam tam atonge tam zabike tam 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 amote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injo biyen 